guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip. And this week's Tuesday tip is about patience. If you guys remember correctly, this 150 gallon modified River Hill stream tank was my very first build for this channel. And it took me several years to get together all the equipment and my plans and even the fish and I'm still not even done stocking yet. So I wanted to talk a little bit this week about different strategies for planning and planning your planted aquarium and the difference between a nature aquarium and a carefully aquascaped planted tank. Now there's several types of aquascapes that people do. You know, there's the ones that are for competition where you try and follow all the rules and you want your hardscape and your plants to follow a specific schematic in order to get a desired aesthetic result. Um, or in layman's terms, you want it to look really, really pretty and make complete sense. For me, I think what attracts me to planted aquariums is sort of the haphazard tendencies of nature. So when I do a tank, I plan to have it running for a long time. I don't plan on putting plants in, pulling plants out, following all the rules, taping out my rule of thirds, and you know, making it an award-winning scape. Um, what I want is to have a natural representation of what, what can happen. And this tank was based upon the idea of a river system. And in river systems, you know, rocks get tumbled, wood gets blown down the river, they all get stuck together, plants get blown around and sort of attach wherever they can and find life that way. I kind of think of it as like a secret garden. So this tank is my secret garden. And yes, I'll show you, some plants have done really well, some not so much, but that's also nature. Uh, I have made a few mistakes with this tank. Uh, you know, I should have followed my instincts and instead I listened to some well-meaning friends and uh, I had a bit of an algae bloom which has compromised a few of the plants. But all in all, I think it's really successful and we're creeping up on the one year point since I planted it. It's been over a year now since I set up my hardscape lights and substrate. Um, so we'll take a look and you guys can see what's done well, what hasn't. And uh, we'll talk a little more about that. I could not be more pleased with the way this side of the tank has gone. Um, I didn't even plant those mosses, if you remember correctly, but they have gone and infiltrated that wood, and, and that's a really natural thing to have happen in the wild, you know. Plants get tumbled down the river, they get stuck in these jumbles of wood or rocks, they find their little crevice and they just grow. And that's exactly what's happened in this tank. And you can see the Bucephalandras are going bonkers. In fact, I've probably pulled a five gallon bucket's worth out of here to share with other hobbyists. The Bulbitis on this side is doing kind of iffy. I think it's a bit too much light for it. Um, but it's still continuing to grow and again, I've pulled at least a basketball size of that out. I really, really love how the Bucephalandras have colonized this wood and spread across. If you guys remember correctly, it was just some teeny tiny little sprigs that I tried in here because I really wasn't at all sure how it would work out. You know, there's a lot of um, information about keeping plants and I think another thing to take from this week's video and really my philosophy on fish keeping is that n it, there's no hard and fast rules to anything try it, especially with plants. What works for one person may not work for you and what works for you may be totally different with the same results as what works for another person. It's, you know, this, this planted aquarium, at least low tech like I do, is not really a very exact science. There's a lot of trial and error and you shouldn't be afraid to try something. The worst that happens is the plant dies and you try something else. The island here has just continued to grow and grow and grow and I absolutely love it. Now the roots have become completely infiltrated with moss and I've had to pull a lot of that out because it, it 
tends to catch stuff I don't want it to catch and it got a little bit of hair algae. But as you can see, all in all, this side of the tank has done really well. Now, one thing that has done iffy is my Dwarf Sagittaria. Um, I think the problem with this, you can see it's a bit brown here, is not only does it ha not have enough light, but the fish that I have in here, all the gobies, tend to like root around and dig into the substrate, and I think their root system just doesn't like that. You can see I, I dropped some food in here so everybody's hanging out at the bottom. Now a pleasant surprise has been how well these crypts have done. I got these from a friend of mine in Connecticut named Penny, and she sent them to me, and as you guys know, I don't have a ton of tanks with substrate, so I figured I'd just throw some in the 150 and see how they did. I really wasn't expecting much since this tank doesn't get dosed with fertilizers, it's not a nutrient rich substrate, and it was really just trying to put them someplace. And they have done really well, and I think they add a really interesting um, texture to the tank that otherwise would have been missing. If you guys remember correctly, this bulbitis was really tiny and it kind of looked like Bozo the Clown hair when I first put it in. It's not exactly doing what I planned for it to do, which was to climb up that corner filter. However, it has grown and filled in and come around the corner beautifully, and I'm pretty happy with it. We'll see what happens as more time passes. Again, this tank is a marathon, not a sprint. This is one that I hope to have running for the rest of my hobby and really just see where it takes us. All in all, I think it's a really beautiful tank. And let's get some close-ups for the fish so I can update you about those guys too. I stuck in a large group of these cobitis, and they have multiplied. In fact, you can see an adult in the back and a juvenile in the front. It's kind of exciting. Now, I never saw really teeny tiny babies, but I added maybe 10 and now I have about 30. So I'm pretty positive they're breeding in here. The white clouds are constantly spawning and sparring and are really phenomenal. Most people that come through the fish room really are shocked at how beautiful they can become when kept in the right conditions. And these are just your standard $1.50 or dollar white clouds. In some stores you can find them in the feeder bin. But I think they are, as I've mentioned in the past, one of the most underrated fish in the hobby. I mean, look at these guys. Really, really beautiful. Now I did end up pulling out the rainbow shiners from this tank in order to set them up to spawn separately. And I haven't added them back in yet. Um, I did find, however, as you can see in the, the zebra dude here, I found some old uh, Micronema chylus cruciatus or dwarf zebra hovering loaches that I've stuck in here as well. And I'm really hoping those are going to breed for me because they've gotten increasingly difficult to get. In fact, I haven't been able to get them for a few years. You can see the Rhinogobius jui are still doing really, really well. It's a male there. I haven't noticed any fry, but the males do disappear. At some point, I may have to pull them in order to try spawning them more intentionally. But I get really awesome behaviors from them. He's checking out a lady now. She just swam by out of frame. You can see the rocks have gotten that thick green growth. That was my plan. Uh, at one point, several friends of mine suggested putting in just some macro ferts. Uh, because some of my Busa phalandra had some holes in the leaves, and that's suggestive of, you know, a nutrient deficiency. And I thought, you know, the TDS in this tank's so low, why not? So I did, and I had a massive, massive algae outbreak. And I really regret not uh, continuing with my keep it simple stupid method, because I've had to do a lot of work to get it back to where it was. But it's doing better again now, and I'm going to continue to just not fertilize, do my weekly large volume water changes, and let this tank progress in its natural path. If you guys remember correctly, I did have some losses back in July when I had a filter failure. Uh, but since then, everything's done really well. I still have quite a few really interesting fish in this tank. The gastromyazon. Viriosis, the ones that are half zebra striped, half yellow, are doing really well. In fact, I think they might be on eggs right now because I can't find them. 
which is generally a good sign with hillstream loaches. Now to combat some of the algae I had that was growing on the leaves of all my plants from adding those fertilizers, I did toss in just a handful of nearite snails. Uh, with a 150 gallon tank, I think I added three or four just to help a little bit and it's really worked wonderfully. And with so few, they're not out competing my grazers in this tank. Ooh, look at this guy. for watching. Over the next couple weeks, I'm going to continue to update you guys over the various tanks I've showed you in the past year. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of those updates, as well as my new Tuesday tips and Sunday species spotlights. I'm heading to Chicago next weekend to compete in the Aquatic Experience Aquascaping Contest again. So wish Jen and I luck. Um, as always, thanks for your continued support. Make sure you stop by my Facebook as well as my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. As always, if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, let me know below.